Okay, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and good day. Today, you will be study about topic number 3 which is pending stress. In this topic, you will be cover about composite beam and reinforced concrete beam. Before we start the class, students should know about the learning outcome for this topic. Okay, the learning outcome for this topic is students should be able to determine the stress in the beam member caused by bending. Okay, beams constructed of two or more different materials are referred to as composite beam. Since the Flagler formula was developed only for beam made of homogeneous material, this formula cannot be applied to directly determine the normal stress in a composite beam. However, it developed a method for modifying or transforming a composite beams cross section into one made of a single material. Once this has been done, the flexural formula can be used to determine the bending stress in the beam. If a bending moment is applied to this beam, then it is homogeneous. The total cross-sectional area will remain plain after bending, and hence the normal strain will vary linearly from zero at the natural axis to a maximum from this axis. It is shown in Figure 6-36b. Provided the material is linear elastic, then at any point of at any point the normal stress in material one is determined from stress equals to modulus of elasticity one E one time by strain and for the material number 2, the stress is found from stress equals to E2 time strain. Okay. Assuming material 1 is stiffer, material 1 is stiffer than uh, material 2, then E1 must be larger than E2. And so, the stress distribution will look like that shown in figure 6-36C or figure 6-36D. This necessary width can be determined by considering the force DF acting on the area DA equals to DZ DY of the beam. It is DF equals to stress DA equals to E1 time by strain time DZ DY. Assuming the width of a cor corresponding element of height DY is N DZ, then DF prime equals to stress da prime equals to e2 time by strain time n dz dy equating these forces so that they produce the same moment about the z which is natural as this we have that the equation is e1 time by strain dz dy equals to E2 times strain times N dz dy so that we can simplify this equation into N equals to E1 divided by E2 
this uh, dimensionless number n is called the transformation factor the area of transformation the area of the transform material da prime equals to n dz dy is n times the area of actual material da equals to dz dy that is df equals to da time stress equals to stress prime time by da prime so that the equation is uh, stress dz dy equals to stress prime time n time dz dy so that from this equation we can simplify to make the equation stress equals to n time stress prime you must remember the transform homogene homogeneous beam obtained through a transformation factor which is n equals to e1 divided by e2 and the normal stress is stress equals to n time by stress prime where n is called the transformation factor a composite beam made of two material 1 and 2 shown in figure 6-36a and then for the figure 6-36c show that if the beam is thought to consist entirely of the less stiff material 2 then the cross section will look like this okay the normal stress distribution over the transform cross section will be linear as shown in figure g or figure h if beam has been transform into one having a single material okay we continue uh, the second subtopic which is reinforced concrete beam all beams subjected to pure bending must resist both tensile and compressive stress concrete however is very susceptible to cracking when it is in tension and therefore by itself it will not be suitable for resisting a bending moment so that steel reinforced, reinforced rod is placing within a concrete beam at a location where the concrete is in tension the normal stress distribution acting on the cross-sectional area of a reinforced concrete beam as assumed to look like in figure 6-37b okay you can see this one is a uh, steel rod And then this one is concrete. Okay, the stress analysis requires locating the natural axis and determining the maximum stress in the steel and concrete. Okay, the area of steel is first transformed into an equivalent area of concrete using the transformation factor n equals to e steel divided by e concrete as we discussed in subtopic of composite beam 
this ratio give n more than 1 requires a greater amount of concrete to replace the steel. The transform area is n time by area of steel and the transform section look like sh shown in figure C. With reference to the natural axis, therefore the moment of the two area together summation of y bar time area must be zero. Y bar equals to summation of summation of uh, y bar time area divided by summation of area equals to zero. Since B H prime time H prime divided by two minus N time area of steel time D minus H prime equals to zero. So we we can we can uh, substitute sorry uh, we can simplify this equation into this. So we can we can get that the equation is b over two h prime squared plus n time area of steel time h prime minus n time area of steel time d equals to zero, where d represent the distance from the top of the beam to the thin strip of transform steel. And B is the beam width, and H prime is the yet unknown distance from the top of the beam to the natural axis. To obtain uh, H prime, we require the natural axis to pass through the central C of the cross sectional area of the transform section in figure. 6-37C. For your information, the difference between composite and reinforced concrete beam is dimension and area. For composite beam, you just need to change the dimension only. But for RC beam, you need to change the area. Why you need to change uh, area? It is because the shape is not same. Mostly, steel is round shape, and concrete is rectangular shape, so that the shape both of material is different. That's why you need to change the area. Okay, that's all. Thank you so much. Assalamualaikum.